Good morning, YouTube community. This is uh, Colin with you from TFDI. Since we had a few extra minutes, I figured we would go over the complete 737 startup procedure. Appreciate the positive results everybody gave me on my last video. Really means a lot. I'm hoping that I can uh, make everybody happy with this one, too. And there will be more to come. Before we get started, something I'd like to mention is that I do have an actual checklist here next to me. Use as reference to make sure I don't forget things. If you have a printer and a good source to get one from, I definitely recommend having that. It can never hurt. And I'll see what I can do about getting the one I have here uploaded. So we find ourselves parked here at Albany. Uh, we're using an add-on called Shade right now, which is why the shading of my cockpit and the area around the airport is a little different. I'll put a link to that in the description box. It's a pretty cool add-on. We'll talk a little more about that in another video. So why don't we get started? If you go to your shift 6, your overhead panel, we'll start with our battery. This is going to pretty much give us basic power. You can arm your uh, emergency lights. They'll come on at this point since we don't have any power. So that'll give us some extra lighting. You go to your FS Actions menu and your uh, PMDG FMC. I'm just going to connect ground power. Or, uh, ground power. That's the overhead, we'll pull the ground power unit. And there we go. So now with that going, we're going to go ahead and start the IRS, which is on the top of the overhead panel. Not accessible via the Shift 6 menu. I'm going to right click both of these. And you really can't see it, but it's going to say Nav. You're turning it to the Nav setting. You wait for these lights to both say Align. That will be good. Go ahead and head into the FMC get to the FMC. I'm going to go to the position initial page. We're going to put the last position into the set IRS position and our airport into the reference airport box. FYI, the data is entered via hitting these buttons. It's called the level select key next to the dots that you're trying to replace it with. Which is why we put this one in here and so on. Alright. We're good to go there. So now we can go ahead and flip on the IR or the uh, yaw damper. You'll see the light go out. That's not going to work if your IRS isn't on, so that's why we waited. And then here, we're running ground power. We don't need our fuel quite yet. The alley power is on. Ground power is on. Uh, the generator is down here. You can't see my mouse, I don't think. But uh, we're waterfalling. This is called the waterfall method. We're just going to start at the top of the panel, fall down that column, check everything, start the next one, go down. So, got all that. Going to go to this middle here. Turn on our seatbelt signs. I'll post a link to that seatbelt sign sound that was recorded from the real plane, actually by me. If anybody wants that. Go ahead and turn on our window heat. These should be on for at least 10 minutes before you depart. Our hydraulics can stay as they are for now. For here. You can turn the research fan on on the air conditioning panel, but it's loud and it gets a bit drafty, so it depends on what the weather's like. We're gonna leave it off for today. Come down here. We don't need our logo lights or anything during the day. We can just turn your wing lights on. Sorry about that. And, uh, flip your ignition to right. This is a bit of a gray area when it comes to how it's correctly done. From what I understand, uh, the day should start with the right engine as being the one you start first, but it depends on the downwind. Or if the, whatever is downwind is the, run point, uh, is the engine you're going to start first. So, today we're going to start the right engine. We'll get the ATIS in a few minutes, and then that will give us a better estimate. I'm just going to take a minute here and turn the brightness of my displays down. I hate blue displays. Same with the FMC. This is accessed via the knobs behind the uh, yoke. You can lower the yoke as I have here by clicking on the top of it, so you can get to those controls. Alright, so now we're going to flip our flight directors on. It's on the MCP panel, or mode control panel. We're going to pull our auto brake to RTO. So now we've got our plane pretty much ready to go, except for the fact we haven't opened any doors, but that's because this is just a tutorial video. So now we're going to head into the FMC procedures. What we'll do now is we'll go to the index, we'll go to the performance page. Well, let's set up our performance first. I 
do this flight semi-frequently, so I know we need about 12,000 pounds to do this flight. Fuel. Okay, and we'll set a Southwest Airlines full house, 137 passengers. We'll leave the cargo as it is. So now something, we'll go back to the FMC and the performance initial. This is something that's cool about the NGX. If you click on the level select key next to zero fuel weight, it'll give it to you down here in the scratch pad, which avoids you having to do the math. Reserves, we're going to put in about six. Uh, cost index, uh, this is also another gray area. I personally have used 20 whenever I've been on Southwest flights, and I've been in the cockpit, they're using 20. I've also heard it's used as 36, but we're going to use 20 for this flight. This pretty much just has to do with the amount of fuel burned per hour and the efficiency of the airplane. Lower, the slower you're going to go, but the less fuel you're going to burn, the higher, the faster you're going to go, and so on. Our cruising altitude for this flight will be 280. Our route page, Albany. Now here's something that I didn't even know about until just recently. Well, about six months. If you had, for you Active Sky users, uh, I'm using Active Sky Evolution. If you turn your COM1 radio to 122.0, you get a Alpha, Alpha, Lima, Bravo, information, Charlie, 1 So there we go. And now we've got that the winds are at about 1 9, which is almost directly perpendicular to our uh, position currently. So, we're going to slide to runway 1-9-er, although it's not usually a standard departure for the purpose of this video, we'll do that. Or I believe Baltimore. The uh, flight number for today, I'm actually going to include the airline IKO in the flight number. Okay. Something that I just saw asked today is the specific way to do the route. A lot of times people will go to the legs page and insert all of the waypoints. Yes, that's a completely valid way of doing it, but it can take a little longer than necessary. We're going to go to the route page, and if we hit the next page button, we get this. This is via on the left and two on the right. We're going to use this for entering our, our waypoints today. If this is just the waypoint, we're going to put it in two box, select whatever one makes sense. If there's more than one, it'll prompt you. It's going to be via direct, because we're not flying via an airway or jetway or anything like that. Now, when we get to this, this is uh, Jetway 75, we're going to put that in the via box, and then the next waypoint, MXE, Mike X-Ray Echo, we'll put in the 2 the, the, sorry about that. We'll put that in the 2 box. And then we're going to need to go via uh, Victor 378 to Baltimore VOR. Now if we go to our legs page, it inserted four pages of legs for us on one page of route entry. So that just simplifies the procedure if you're using airways. It really makes no difference if it's primarily waypoint based. So now we'll head to our takeoff. Uh, tend to use flaps 5. If you're particularly heavy, you can use flaps 10 or 15. Uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference in the takeoff performance, however. Only if you're incredibly heavy or on a short runway. Another cool thing is the center of gravity can be uh, obtained the same way by clicking on the level select key next to it, and the NGX will give it to you. So now, before we select our departure speeds, we're going to do something that most videos don't cover. We're going to handle derating. Most airlines do not use full takeoff power for due to efficiency and sometimes noise abatement. So we're going to go ahead and select takeoff 1 and climb 1, which will just give us a, a lower thrust on takeoff. But we have plenty of space for it, and we have we would like to use less fuel. So now that that's set, we come back to the takeoff page. You notice our V-speeds are a tad higher now. We're going to set our uh, IIS bug on the MCP. 
to 125, which is our rotate speed. All right. Just take another quick look over the FMC, make sure we didn't miss anything. Make sure all the progress of everything. All right. Go ahead and just set our uh, right side FMC to the progress page. Check, we're going to have about 7.8 thousand pounds of fuel left. That's subject to change once we get up in the air and the winds start happening. Normally in Albany, our initial altitude is going to be 3,000. Uh, the KTC gives it to you, but we're not actually online right now, so. But we'll simulate a standard departure with that anyway. As you see in the time that we were handling our FMC, our navigation displays have come online. Uh, well, this, this sign hasn't yet. You're going to get to see this happen. Uh, this is because we aligned the IRS in the beginning, and it's been about eight minutes. So, and the exact time that this takes is going to vary depending on your latitude of the aircraft. I'm not sure if the NGX simulates that, although I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Uh, but this process takes between, I'd say, eight to twelve minutes, depending on your location. Usually on the shorter side of that. So now that we've got everything all set to go, we're going to run through our systems tests and our uh, radio setup. Uh, because I'm a VATSIM pilot, I have my COM1 set to the Unicom frequency for now. We'll set our uh, transponder to 2200, which is standard for VATSIM IFR. And we're going to do a TCAS test here real quick. You can watch this happening on this display. TCAS test. Pass. Alright. Now we'll pull our... Uh, Shipless test here. Glide slow. Take off one. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Alright. We just did the short test. If you hold that for about 10 seconds, you're going to get the entire system test, which takes about a minute and 10 seconds. Something to that effect. So I don't really have time for that right now, so we're going to do the short one. Do the fire tests. the recall. Okay, so we should be about good to go now. At this point, the flight tenants would be uh, finishing up the boarding and whatnot, depending on when you start your free flight. In real life, the boarding takes about 20-25 minutes, so we'd have some time now. We'd be doing our logbook and what other paperwork is necessary. But we're going to start our APU. Flip our fuel pumps on. You can hear that start. I'm going to take a quick look through my checklist here. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Ah, we did. The pressurization on the overhead panel. We need to set this to our cruising altitude. We'll leave this, whatever it is, and it's going to pick it up from the FMC. So we'll set this to our cruise altitude. Alright. So we're just going to wait for APU to come on now. It's this dial up next to the windshield wiper switch, uh, it, you'll see it come up over about uh, what is that? six, or, yeah, and then it'll come back down and it'll stabilize, and then this a AP Gen Off bus light will come on. So normally we'd be closing the doors and preparing to departure now, but our doors aren't closed, so our doors aren't open right. So we'll run through the lights check real quick, make sure all the lights illuminate properly. Alright, and at this point, we would uh, be ready for pushback. Thanks for watching, folks.